warning government risk plunging the country into a full-blown labor crisis as the deadline handed it by organized unions to back down in its quest to enforce the VAT on electricity elapses today. Also in this package, former President John Dramani Mahama says the next NDC administration will not recognize the controversial SML revenue assurance contract. Happen. An NDC government under me will not accept or recognize this SML agreement. Parliament is investigating it. The president has hurriedly gone to get KPMG to come and audit it. And much later in the bulletin, mobile money agents must link their accounts to their Ghana cards today as blocking of unlinked accounts takes off on February 1. And by uh, asking me uh, whether everybody in Ghana is having a Ghana card, it's no. And so we have other challenge. We want to say that what are the provisions that are made for these people? We have details of these stories and a lot more coming to you shortly if you stay with us. <laughs> Let's settle for the details of the stars this morning. The seven days ultimatum issued by organized labor to government to abandon the decision to impose a 15% value added tax on electricity expires today with a call on government to withdraw its letter to the Electricity Company of Ghana and the Northern Electricity Distribution Network, NETCO. Organized labor threatening to go on strike if government does not rescind its decision. But the finance ministry in a statement appealed to organized labor and all stakeholders, including the Electricity Company of Ghana and NETCO, to exercise restraint to facilitate a constructive dialogue towards a quick resolution of the AMPAs. Here, General Secretary of the Trade its Union Congress, Dr. Yaba, who first issued the warning to the strike. Well, since 2022, electricity tariffs have gone up by 73%. In 2021, if you were paying 100 cars, now I say customer is paying 100. It is also important and very, very sad for me, very, very sad to note that why government is supposed to be on us, presidential customers of electricity. Plans are far advanced to remove VAT on mineral exploration in Ghana for wealthy multinational mining companies. Hey. <laughs> That was the voice of Dr. Yaba, who is the General Secretary of the Trades Union Congress there. Moving on, mobile money agents have up to the close of day today to link their accounts with their Ghana cards or risk being blocked by the government. Now, the directive comes out to the Ghana Revenue Authority, director of the Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications, to block all SIM cards not linked to Ghana card or tax identification numbers by February 1. He is president of the Momo Agents Association, Della Abochi. You realize that even as at now, people are not even having uh, the Ghana card. And now Ghana card has become uh, the only document that you can uh, use for every transaction when you go to the bank. And by asking me uh, whether everybody in Ghana is having a Ghana card, it's no. And so we have other challenges. Yeah, so okay. we want to say that what are the provisions that are made for these people? The voice of Dela Bochi, who is the president of the Momo Agents Association. Moving on. About 7 million males aged 15 to 49 years have engaged in sex with women, not their wives. Recent data from the Ghana Demographic and Health Survey by the Ghana Statistical Service further indicates that unprotected sex is rampant among these age brackets with dire consequences for HIV rates. A report by Deborah Abamensa. The survey raises alarming red flags as it highlights a pattern of unprotected sex, lack of HIV testing habits, and potential pitfalls. The report says 7 out of 10 men between the ages of 15 to 49 don't use protection during sexual intercourse. It also said about 7 million men within the same age category have had sex with women other than their wives. The Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, 
Dr. Cherime Etuahin, said the gap in testing is a major challenge in the fight against HIV AIDS. For us to achieve our national targets, we expect that people who are at risk, and that is people who are involved in multiple concurrent sexual partnerships, those who are involved in casual sex, must use condoms consistently and correctly. The AIDS Commission said growing discrimination, especially against high-risk groups, was hampering testing. Prevention is an issue. The number of people accessing, although they know, they know about the availability of the service, like the prevention of mother-to-child transmission, the antiretroviral treatment, the testing services, but not everyone who translates his or her knowledge of these services into access. The report by my colleague Deborah about Mensa there. Away from that, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, uh, the NDC, John Jermaine Mahama, has waded into the controversial SML deal. John Mahama lashing out at government says it only created the SML deal to fleece the state of its scarce resources. Warning, a future NDC government will not recognize the contract but go after all those involved. He was speaking to teacher unions in Koforidia. I mean, you cannot fleece a country like this. One would have thought that the corruption cases were enough, but it's even made Ghanaians numb. Now Ghanaians are not surprised again. Uh, this corruption does not shock Ghanaians the way it used to shock us. Today, when there's a scandal, people are like, oh, uh, yeah, bre we, we, we. because they are all tired. Everybody is tired. And so even in the twilight, when you're about to exit office, you are still coming up with schemes to steal Ghanaians' money. But I say that this won't happen. An NDC government under me will not accept or recognize this SML agreement. Parliament is investigating it. The president has hurriedly gone to get KPMG to come and audit it. Whatever audit they do, I say won't accept or respect any agreement with SML. John Dramani Mahama is the flag bearer of the NDC. In another development, the National Democratic Congress insists it does not support any plans to move the election date from December to November, despite the Electoral Commission saying 50% of political parties support the idea. In a statement, the NDC said the Inter-Party Advisory Committee meeting agreed that the ideal date for that change will be in 2028. Earlier, the General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Kwete, spoke to 3FM about the opposition. For purposes of having an election ahead of December to allow for transition, I think in principle that was not a problem. But the NDC position, which I think was largely a position of many other political parties, was that the time to have it done will be post-2024 in order to allow the whole of the country, the Electoral Commission, Parliament, everybody to prepare properly. Vivi Kwete is the General Secretary of the NDC. Before we go... The Ghana Football Association, the GFA, has apologized to Ghanaians for the abysmal performance of the Black Stars at the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations in Côte d'Ivoire. Ghana exited the group stage without winning any game, losing 1-2 to Cape Verde and drawing 2-2 with Egypt and Mozambique in Group B. The statement was issued after an executive council meeting with all chairmen of the Regional Football Association in attendance. The council last week took a decision to terminate the contract of Black Stars head coach Chris Hilton. But that's how we wrap up on the morning news on 3FM 92.7. This morning news on our website, 3news.com. My name is Noble Crosby and Business News is up next. Good morning.